We are investigating whether it is feasible to use electricity producing speed bumps to power street lamps. Aspects of the problem we will consider include possible designs for the speed bump, whether it will produce enough energy, whether it outcompetes other methods of energy generation, and if it is financially viable. The model for the electricity generating speed bump works by converting gravitational potential energy into elastic potential energy within the springs, as well as kinetic energy into a small rod which turns the generator on. As the car comes off the speed bump, the elastic potential energy within the springs converts to kinetic energy for the generator as well as gravitational potential energy at the ramp as it returns to its starting position. The energy generated from the speed bump would come from the change in gravitational energy. We can calculate the maximum energy generated assuming 100% efficiency from the equation energy equals mgh where m is the mass of the car and its passengers, g is the acceleration due to gravity and h is the decrease in height. We take the mass of the car as 1,250 kilograms and assume each car only contains one passenger of average weight, 76 kilos. We take the height of the speed bump to be 0.1 meters, the height of a standard speed bump to keep the model realistic for safety reasons. This means the total energy generated from one car driving over one speed bump is around 1,301 joules. To put this into perspective, it takes around 3.456 times 10 to the 6 joules to power a street lamp for 12 hours, so it would require 2,656 cars travelling over one speed bump to power one street lamp for 12 hours. And this is assuming all the gravitational potential energy is transferred directly to the street lamp with no losses. It is unrealistic to predict that 2,656 cars will travel over one speed bump in one day, and we must remember this amount of cars is required to power only one streetlight for 12 hours, and it is likely there will be more streetlights in a row than speed bumps. So for the speed bumps to power all the lights in the road, even more cars would have to travel over them to generate enough electricity. So it may not be feasible to suggest using electricity generating speed bumps as a sole power source for streetlights. However, it could be beneficial to use this method to supplement traditional power methods to both reduce the cost of power for the local council and to reduce our carbon footprint. One unit of energy is one kilowatt hour and costs around 10.5 pence. One kilowatt hour is 3.6 million joules. If one car travelling over one speed bump produces 1,301 joules, the number of cars required to produce one unit of energy would be roughly 2,767. The cost of a speed bump would be a minimum of £20,000. This means to cover the cost of the speed bump it would have to produce around 200,000 units of energy. Because 2,767 cars produce one unit of energy, 5.5 times 10 to the eight cars would be required to produce 200,000 units. So 5.5 times 10 to the eight cars would be required to drive over one speed bump just to cover the cost of one speed bump. An article on the Guardian website from February 2009 said that speed bumps put in London would cost between £20,000 and £55,000, generating 10 to 36 kilowatts of power with a steady stream of traffic. This would produce between £5,840 and £21,024 per year. Assuming that the cheapest bump will produce the least power, then solar panels available for domestic use would not outperform the speed bump. According to a witch guide, a solar panel which costs £6,500 produces £600 worth of power each year, meaning that £20,000 worth of solar panel would generate approximately £1,800 per year. However, the solar panel figures are those available domestically, including various tariffs which may or may not be available to businesses. Also, they require a south-facing roof and the effectiveness and thus revenue from solar panels increases towards the south as there is more sunlight. Overall, weighing up the pros and cons that arise from these aspects of the problem, it may be feasible to use speed bumps to supplement traditional electricity generating methods to power streetlights. However, it would require a significant investment.